God creates the water and we dig wells. The enemy seeks to stop the wells by covering it with dirt. The wells become dry and the dry wells become prisons. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The world we live in is dying out of thirst. The church is the well where rivers of living water flow to bring life to people, breakthrough to finances, peace to families, healing to physical bodies and freedom to souls. Join us as we go digging. Acts chapter 12 and verse chapter 2. Acts chapter 12 and verse chapter 2. Then he killed Herod, killed James the brother of John with the sword. And let's skip um, a few verses to verse 5. Peter therefore kept in prison but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, the night that Peter was sleeping, we're going to pause for that for just a moment. We see that Herod, and I want to use the, not to take the scripture out of the context because it's wrong, but to take the spiritual principles in this supernatural, miraculous story that will apply to deliverance. Herod, I want to apply it like to the devil. Because number one is he was bad. Number two, he died being eaten by worms. That's exactly what's going to happen to the devil. The Bible says that he will go into the lake of fire where fire will not die and worms will eat the devil. That's why when he reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Can somebody say praise the Lord. The devil was defeated on the cross. In the, garden of, 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 in the garden of Eden, Adam and Eve gave him the power. That's why devil in Luke said to Jesus, I can give you all the power because it was delivered to me. Adam delivered it to the devil. But Jesus refused it. Jesus crushed the head of the serpent on the cross. And when Jesus came back, he says, I have the power in heaven and on earth. That means the devil is illegal and he is a criminal on the earth right now. Devil is not a king on the earth no more after Jesus' resurrection. He is a criminal. We are the spiritual police and he is like a mafia and a cartel. But we have the badge, we have the gun, we have the authority and we have the power. Can somebody say amen? But Herod, the Bible says he killed James and the church when Herod locked up Peter, they did not say, well, maybe it's God's will. He can kill Peter as well. What they did is they prayed consistently. I want to speak today not to allow our defeats, unanswered prayers or disappointments to stand in the way of what God wants to do now in our life. If your James died, don't let your Peter die because you are so broken over what God did not do with James. Every person in here including myself has a James story. It's when we prayed for something and it did not happen. It's when we fasted for someone and they still died. It's when we stood for something and it did not take place. And many times James stands in the way of seeing breakthrough with Peter. So many people gave up their hope in healing because they said my mother died out of cancer. That person and the pro died out of this disease and the prophet said they will be healed. Listen, do not get tripped up over what God has not done. Because God still is a healer. He did not change because someone in my family died. God did not stop being Jehovah Rapha. Just because somebody overdosed, God did not stop being Jehovah Nisi. Just because somebody lives in depression, God did not stop being Jehovah Shalom. Our faith in healing is not based on those who got healed. It's based on the name of our God. And He does not change. He's so big, He can't change because of me. He remains the same. 
his nature, his name, his promise and what he did on the cross is the basis of our belief. Do not edit your doctrine because of your disappointment. Do not change your belief because of your defeat. Because something did not happen. We all have that. I have stories of friends and relatives we prayed for and nothing happened. Did we, when we pray for everybody, did everybody get healed? Not yet. But if we're not going to pray, nothing's going to happen. We base our faith not on how many people get out of the wheelchairs, not how many blind eyes see. We base our faith on the fact of who God is, what He promised, and the fact that He loves people. And if I bury James, I'm going to fight for Peter. If I bury James, I will fast for Peter. And I will not let James to change the view of God so that I miss the miracle for Peter. People sometimes say, well, you know, oh, you guys prayed, and, you know, and nothing happened. Well, have you realized every person who died went to the hospital? Yet, when we get sick, what is the first place we go to? The hospital. Why? Because they do help some people. What if you would treat God with the same dignity as you treat a medical practitioner? You don't come to the doctor and sue him just because you went through a chemo and somebody still passed away. No, you realize they're doing their best. And so same thing has to be with God. Never let the disappointment trip you up. Three Hebrew boys said is that our God who we serve is able. But if he doesn't, we ain't bowing. Meaning we're not going to let it change anything about us because life is more than 70, 80, 90 or 100. Life will continue in eternity and we place our trust not only for this and now but for there and later. Can somebody say amen? With that said, I want you to see this is the church is praying for Peter and God is about to bring an answer for Peter. Peter, Peter is in prison Somebody say prison. Come on, somebody say prison. Peter is in chains. Somebody say chains. And Peter is guarded with soldiers. Somebody say soldiers. So prison, chains, soldiers. And the fourth thing is he's in the darkness. Because there is dark. The light had to come in. And Herod puts him in prison, chains him up to soldiers. So if he breaks out, he can't run anywhere. He puts darkness in that prison. But the church is praying. If you have someone that you know right now who's in a spiritual prison, who is chained with addictions, and who are connected to some demonic spirits of soldiers, never stop praying for them. Never stop fasting for them. There is a person in this room today who the spouse gave them a divorce letter not many days ago. And they came to this conference, brought the clothes of their spouse, hoping somebody will pray so God can reverse the divorce. And when we announced it yesterday, we're going to pray. They ran quickly and dropped. And that clothes is laying right here. Because see, they're not willing to give up on their marriage just because it ended up in prison. Don't give up on your health just because it ended up in prison. Pray for it. And the Bible says, church prayed for Peter. Today, this is what's going to happen. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for, for the people that will come for that prayer. When we will pray, I believe this is what could happen. God will release His Spirit to come into your prison. As we pray, God sends His Spirit to the person's prison. A light begins to come. And the Bible says, is when the angel came into the prison, the chains, somebody say chains, somebody say chains fell off. So the chains, when the angel came, the chains, they fell off from Peter right away. Now, these chains, they didn't fall loudly. These chains, they didn't fall violently, quietly, but it was real. I believe when we pray today, God is going to be removing spiritual chains. 
Now some people will feel it. They will get nauseous, nauseated in their stomach. Some people right before the prayer line out of nowhere will feel sick and will want to run because it's the enemy knowing his last seconds is coming. Some people will throw up. Some people will faint. Some people their eyes roll. I've seen people who they, they, their tongues twist and become like a snake. Some people they, they begin to act like snakes because the, the, the evil spirit on them. And some people nothing happens at all. Most people nothing absolutely. You know what they feel afterwards? Something lifted or they feel lighter. I want to tell you something. You don't need to shake and bake to have your chains fall off. Please, I want to set somebody free right now. A demon doesn't need to speak through you for you to feel chains fall off. You don't need to throw up to have chains fall off. Please understand, but at the same time, it does not mean that if something is happening, you don't need to hold it to look cute. This is not Americans Got Talent show. This is not a time to look cute. This is not a runway where you have to model. This is the time where desperate people seek deliverance. Thirsty people seek Holy Spirit. We are here for Him. We are here because of Him. And we are here expecting from Him. Can somebody say amen? Touch your neighbor and say, ain't time to be cute. When you seek the Holy Spirit and something is happening when prayer is being offered, some kind of a thing you realize it's 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 not there it wasn't there before i ask you this don't make anything up don't create anything yield to the holy spirit that's all oh but i'm gonna i don't want to be on the camera you don't want to live in prison think about that if you care more about your camera you should have not come if you care more about what people think of you then you have not been tormented enough to care nothing but freedom Derek Prince said this, deliverance is only for the desperate. I believe in that. Amen. Chains fell off but nothing, it wasn't loud and it could happen to you. I believe God will set people free today whether you will physically feel it or not. When we pray God does something. He releases His Spirit. But I want you to notice this, though the chains fell off, He was still in prison. Chains fell off. Peter was still in prison. You can be free. You can be delivered but your circumstances and your life not change for a long time. And I want to share in the conclusion of this message. What do you do? Not only to see chains fall off but to see your life change. To see you and I leave prison not just be free from our chains. I used to serve in prison and the people who serve in prison told me this 76 percent of all people in jail are there not for the first time and not for the last time that means it's the same people unfortunately many people go from deliverance to deliverance instead of from deliverance to dominion instead of from deliverance to victory they go from deliverance to deliverance just like a person who is in jail comes out of the jail only to go back to jail needing God to deliver them again that is not the purpose of God God did not created you for deliverance he created you for dominion in the beginning when God blessed Adam and Eve he's blessed them and he didn't give them deliverance he says have dominion Deliverance is not God's goal. God's goal has been and still is dominion. Through the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace, the Bible doesn't say so we get delivered. It's so that we reign in life. Jesus said, behold, I saw Satan fall like a lightning. He didn't say, I deliver you. He says, I give you authority to trample upon snakes. I give you power to rise. I give you anointing to have victory. Somebody give God some praise if you believe. What's coming out of my mouth right now? God created you for dominion. Somebody shout dominion. Somebody shout dominion. Shout dominion like you mean it. Dominion! 
Shout it till every demon hears it. Dominion! Please, deliverance is a means to the goal. God does not see deliverance as the final goal. Deliverance is just the first step so we get into dominion. Can somebody say amen? How do you get to that dominion? Number one, Bible says when Peter, when the angel came into the jail, the first thing that happened to Peter is he woke up. Somebody say, wake up. That's your neighbor say, it's time to wake up. What does it mean? It means spiritually you wake up. Now the angel did something. He hit Peter. This wasn't a rude angel. He didn't gently say, he struck Peter the Bible says and Peter woke up and then secondly he brought the light which woke Peter up. I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to wake us up. See when God sets you free he wants to wake you up meaning he wants you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He wants you to receive the light of God into your life and some of us we are so stubborn that God's whispers to us will not wake us up. It's God hitting us. It's something bad happening to wake us up and realize God is real and we need God. And maybe you are here today and God already hit you nicely, convicted you and the presence of the Holy Spirit has waken you up and you realize you know something needs to happen. I need to open my eyes to Jesus. Jesus is the only truth. Muhammad said, I am the prophet of truth. Buddha said, I am the seeker of truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Come on somebody. Sophie in April, who was dabbling in new age astrology, looking to the stars for solutions, living an insecure life, came to the first night of the conference and saw crazy stuff. Didn't think this was real. The second night, the light came out. Spiritual world is real. God is real. That's why people who accuse us, they say, all oh, this demon thing, it glorifies the devil. Really? Not one person left yesterday saying, oh my gosh, I want to join Satanism. Everybody left saying, oh my God, God is real. And Sophie came the next night and she gave her life to Jesus. And she woke up spiritually. So if you can stand, identify yourself. She came to a summer internship. God delivered her. Now she's staying for the fall internship. God wants you today, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you were here last night or if you're here right now, the first step to walking in freedom and salvation is to spiritually wake up. Now this is the crazy part. God can convict you and turn on the light. It's still your choice to open up your eyes. I'm going to do something that typically I don't do on the services but we need to do it. If you're in this room today and you are in the right, not in the right relationship with Jesus right now, you're not there where you're supposed to be with God. Maybe you're backslidden or maybe your relationship with God is games. It's not serious. The fear of God maybe came upon you as you watched what you watched. Maybe you can't process everything but you know something, the light came into your prison and you're saying, Pastor Vlad, if Jesus is to come tonight, I don't know where I will spend eternity but today I would like to reconcile with God. I feel the Holy Spirit hitting me. I feel the conviction of God. I sense the light of God coming into my darkness and into my mess. I would like to respond. I would like to say yes to Jesus. If that is you, when I count to three, I'm going to ask you to quickly stand up to your feet. One, hell is hot and that's where you're going if you don't know Jesus. Two, forever is extremely long and there is no end. Three, Jesus is the only way to salvation. If you need to get right with God, I want you to stand to your feet just right now wherever you are sitting. Just simply stand to your feet and say, you know what, today I would like to get right with God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, young man. Thank you. Thank you. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing for just a few more minutes. Thank you. 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 
Keep standing for just, I know there's a few more people. Thank you, thank you. A few more seconds. If you're not there where you're supposed to be with the Lord and you feel the conviction of God, keep standing for just a moment. I'm going to lead you in the prayer. If you're watching us on live stream and you're not there where you're supposed to be with Jesus, you can comment below on the YouTube or Facebook and say, I need to get saved. I need to get right with God. Count me in that prayer. In Jesus' name. Church, let's pray this prayer together. Those of you standing, I believe the Holy Spirit is the one that gives new salvation and gives us new heart. I cannot do that. No prayer can do that. Only God can do that. And a repentant heart is what prepares for that miracle. Let's pray that prayer together. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. I surrender my whole life to you right now and from this day forward I promise to follow you the best I know how come in me and change me from the inside out in Jesus name father I pray right now that you will seal them with your Holy Spirit I pray right now that you will bring your light and your salvation into their soul in the name of Jesus Christ those of you who are standing I'm going to ask you to pull out your phone and I want you to text get saved together to 97,000 which is right behind me. The moment you do that then I want you to take your seat in Jesus name. Church can we give them a round of applause right now. You're precious to God. We love you. You are dear to the Lord. Just text that number and then you can take your seat. Somebody say wake up. Somebody say wake up. The moment Peter wakes up I want you to see another thing is that God angel tells Peter he says rise up quickly the second thing I want to mention is rise up somebody say rise up rise up in discipline rise up in discipline what does that mean they mean the moment you accept Jesus Christ after you get delivered you need to have discipline in your life discipline meaning reading the scriptures discipline meaning regular prayer life Discipline means fasting. Discipline means memorizing scripture. Discipline means making covenant with your eyes not to stare at beautiful girls or guys. Discipline. Many people what they do is when they get delivered, the demons are gone, not the flesh. Demons deal with, deliverance deals with demons, but discipline deals with the flesh. And that's why many people get delivered and their life don't change because the flesh still needs to be crucified. When the devil left, he didn't take the flesh. He left the flesh for you to crucify. If you don't discipline your life, your deliverance will not be changing your life. You will be delivered from the chains, but you're not going to be changed. When I was addicted to pornography at the age of 12, up to the age of 16 and 17, God didn't deliver me through somebody praying for me. My pastor instructed and few other people to begin to discipline my life and begin to pray and fast regularly, memorize verses from the Bible. And I can't explain how it happened except this is what happened. It's the flesh started to lose its grip and the chains fell off and the Lord God delivered me. But though he delivered me from that chain of pornography, the lifestyle of fasting, the lifestyle of prayer has to continue if you want to walk from deliverance to your dominion. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say wake up. Somebody say rise up. Now let's say, I'm going to tell you one thing about discipline. Every single person struggles with it. Anybody here struggles with discipline? Peter did as well. When the angel hit him and says, get up. He doesn't. And I love this. The same angel that hit him with the shoe landed his hand and raised him up. If you struggle with discipline, which I do, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Say, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Help me to fast. Help me to read the word. Can somebody say amen? And he will, the same Holy Spirit that stroke you to, to wake you up, will gently give you desire and will 
according to the will of the Father for you to live a disciplined life. Jesus said to his disciples, if any man desires to follow me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross and come and follow me. See, you can make a decision to believe in Jesus, but what I'm talking about is the discipleship which requires discipline. Peter wakes up, Peter rises up with the help of an angel. That means I live a disciplined life with the help of the Holy Spirit. And the third thing I want you to notice is that Peter gets dressed up. The angel says, put some clothes on Peter. We ain't walking naked. Somebody say, dress up. Somebody say, wake up, rise up, and dress up. What does that mean? That means you put on a new attitude and a new confession even though you're still in prison but when your chains are loosed and you're living a disciplined life you have to change your attitude your thinking and your mindset put on the whole armor of Jesus in Ephesians chapter 6 it does not say to put on the armor of God so you can win it's put on the armor of God so you can stand not win why because we already won in Jesus I'm already won but I put on I dress up so I stand in the victory I already have in Jesus my God my God my God my God my God that means that after I got healed I changed my confession I am not a sick person trying to get healthy I am a healthy person fighting sickness I am not a sinner trying to get righteous I am a righteous person fighting sin I am not a weak person trying to get strong I am a strong person fighting weakness my identity is Jesus not my issue my identity is Jesus not my issue somebody give God some praise right now if your identity is in Christ if you know who you are give God some praise right now hallelujah 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 rise up rise up rise up in your victory rise up in who you are rise up in who you are that means that after your deliverance the enemy might come back and still tell you you are not free you have to rise up and you have to put some clothes on and say no devil i am free just because i feel something i know i am free i am i still be battling with nightmares but i know i am free i might still have temptations but i know i am free whom the sun sets free is free indeed i have put on christ touch your neighbor say it's time to get dressed up touch your neighbor say get dressed up and lastly not only we have to wake up not only we rise up we dress up but we also have to get out of the prison follow the holy spirit out of your prison that means that you follow the holy spirit out of your situation step by step how does that happen you follow holy spirit away from toxic relationships you follow holy spirit away from toxic places we follow the holy spirit away from bad environments trigger points we follow the holy spirit through the first post second post through the iron gate we follow the holy spirit all the way why because as we follow the holy spirit something begins to happen we are getting further from our past we are being further from our past temptations and we are getting closer to our dominion. Giovanna here sits and a few years ago, you know, Giovanna came to a conference as such. God delivered her from the spirit of lesbianism that entered her through sexual molestation by a relative. She's a Christian from a Christian family. And when she was delivered, she had to get dressed up. She had to renew her mind. Not what the world says that she's a lesbian, but that she's a daughter of God. She, might, she didn't feel it for some time but she had to renew her mind with that and the, the, another thing is this is the moment she had to renew her mind she also had to walk with the Holy Spirit away from Twitter friends 
from other friends from certain jobs certain places you have to walk with Holy Spirit you're never alone after tonight I'm not going with you home but Holy Spirit is going with you home he is not leaving you until he brings you to your dominion he is not bringing leaving you until he brings you to your victory he is not leaving you until he brings you to your full destiny until you reign with Jesus today Giovanna is not just an ex-lesbian she is a daughter of God she's a servant in the house of God but watch this and I'm gonna finish it on this the angel leaves Peter on the street and Peter has the option to be on the street homeless or to find a home if he wouldn't find a home he would land back in jail what happened with Giovanna and I believe has to happen with every person when you get free you have to rise up you have to get dressed with a new attitude and a new you with what God says about you not because to get victory but because you have victory you have to follow the Holy Spirit out of toxic relationships follow the Holy Spirit out of bad places follow him slowly but surely it might get some time but you will get out of it but you have to not live on the street meaning you have to find a home called a church called a home group and you have to join that church now can I tell you something when Peter found a home he knocked this was the home of Mary he knocked on the door and Mary didn't welcome him in she didn't allow him to come inside and Peter didn't say oh these people hate me I'm gonna go back to prison every church you find will never be perfect every church will give you a little bit of rejection every church will give you something to be offended for it's either because the church is too small or it's too big it's either because pastor casts out demons or he doesn't cast out demons it's either because you like his preaching he's screaming too much or he's not screaming enough there's gonna be always something you're gonna be offended about that's why you have to still join that church why because churches are not perfect. If you find a perfect church, don't join it because you'll, you'll, you'll ruin it. Somebody say, find a home. Find a local church. The problem with our generation today is we are YouTube generation. We live on the street. I get messages every day from 15, sometimes up to 50 a day. Pastor, pray for me. Why? What is your pastor? since when did I became a Facebook pastor you have to have a home church so you don't go to every Facebook prophet and Facebook pastor asking for mentorship and asking for prayer oh I'm gonna step on somebody's toes right now and if you have a local church it's nothing wrong with asking for prayer on Facebook but if you have a local church go to a home group where you can ask about prayer when you can have somebody mentoring you so that Facebook is not a prayer wall but it becomes a place where you connect and interact with people don't live on the street of YouTube and Facebook live in the local church be grounded in the local church every Sunday every home group because that is where God protects you and takes you from deliverance to dominion and somebody say amen somebody say wake up rise up dress up get out and find a home I want you to rise I want you to say this with me say son of David have mercy on me let your mercy and your favor speak for me say this louder say son of David have mercy on me let your mercy and your favor speak for me place your hand upon your heart begin to ask God for his mercy right now on your situation say God get me out of my situation deliver me from my chains God deliver me from my prison and my bad environment set me free Lord God in the name of Jesus Christ